In the 1950s, almost no one in power recognized the vitality in poor communities, a vitality that would not survive in high-rise projects. Almost no one perceived what might be lost by the eradication of whole neighborhoods. In the 1950s, among the most densely populated areas in New York City was the Bronx, and Moses planned to build an expressway through the heart of it. I think when I first looked at it, I thought, how the hell are we ever going to get across here? In 1949, President Truman signed the National Housing Act, creating a federal program called Urban Renewal. It's vast, unprecedented federal housing program gave cities the power of eminent domain. Substantial areas of the city were taken from the owner. The goal was to replace chaotic old neighborhoods with planned communities. What was once a run-down, dying section of the great city of New York has been recreated. Talk to people about urban renewal. Oh, what a great thing we're doing for the poor people. The slum means disease and crime. The new projects mean health and happiness. There are definitions of slums, you know, the income level of the families. But while these people were poor, that didn't mean that they had a bad life, as long as they had their neighbor. The new housing was to be built not by the government, but by private companies handpicked by the city. For the first time in history, the city could condemn a piece of property and turn it over to a private individual. Robert Moses, who was head of New York's Slum Clearance Committee, had the power to pick and choose which companies got the condemned land. They would take over these large chunks of this incredibly valuable real estate. Imagine real estate in Manhattan. He gave it out as political favors to his allies in the Democratic Party. All of the contracts came through the political clubs. They gave them to their friends who were builders or realtors or phony corporations. 